Hello everyone, it's good to be back with you once again as we settle in on this Sunday together. Another chance for us to take some time to see what God might want to say to us this week and how we might respond in turn. My name's Matt, the Vicar of St John's, and Lottie is our children's ministry worker at the church, which is great because she's put together another video for our Sunday Stars aged children. So do check that out in our Sunday Stars playlist if you've got younger ones with you today. Indeed, today is Sunday. Although, if you're anything like me, you're finding it all too easy at the moment to lose track of which day is which as we go through our weeks. Perhaps the usual markers for what makes our days different are not in place at the moment. And that can feel a bit disorientating. And yet, even if our weekly rhythms are a bit off. Our days are still guided by the cycle of the sun and the moon, and even our seconds are guided by the regular beat of our hearts, the click track, the metronome, if you like, which shapes the pace of our life. There is rhythm built into our lives, Time for work, time for rest, time for tears, and a time for joy. With that in mind, I guess my prayer for us today is that we might be aware of the rhythm of God in our lives, both in our time together now, but also in the course of our days, our weeks. And so, Lord, would you keep us in sync with you and your priorities, doing things in time, on time, at the right time, not rushing ahead without you, but not lagging behind when you're calling us to move forward, rather being in the right place at the right time with you. Thank you that you are the one who was, who is, and who is to come. That you know where we've come from, where we are, and where we're going. May your rhythm of life be our rhythm of life. The rhythm of our work, our rest, our play. Help us now to rest with you. And would you use this time to refresh us and equip us for whatever else is to come this day, this week, we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Now, it'd be good today to build on something we spoke about back on Easter Sunday. The idea that despite, or more accurately, because of the limitations to life which this season of lockdown has brought, our enforced isolation means that we're discovering or rediscovering the importance and value of things which we'd previously perhaps been taking for granted. And so as we said the other week, perhaps we're feeling the benefit of stillness and rest for the first time in a long time. Perhaps we're realising just how important our friends or family are to us, or how much we value physical hugs or connecting in person with those closest to us. Perhaps we're feeling encouraged by those who are doing good things in our community to serve and help others. A generosity of spirit which serves perhaps as an antidote to the cynicism we may previously have allowed to shape our view of the world. All sorts of ways in which, although this is a time 
when, yeah, we've lost some things. We've lost our freedom to travel, our ability to see people, lost perhaps activities that we've been used to doing. At the same time, we've gained something too. A fresh perspective, if you like, on the things which really matter to us and which deep down we value most. And if we think about it, this idea that when something is lost, something else is gained. Well, it's a principle which is true in all sorts of ways in life, not least in our own physiological experience. And so, for example, when we lose weight, we might lose the heft that we've been carrying, perhaps. But we gain a whole new sense of well-being, a sense of feeling healthy, perhaps a greater sense of mobility. Even though we've lost something, it's in the losing that we gain. Equally, more profoundly perhaps, it's well attested that when one of our physical senses is dulled or lost, then one or more of our other senses can become heightened. Indeed, this is perhaps most common in terms of blindness, that when sight is lost, then a sense of hearing can become not just increasingly important, but increasingly perceptive. Sounds are heard in a new way, a way in which those with physical sight may not always pick up or be aware of. By way of illustrating this principle, we're going to watch a clip from a documentary called Notes on Blindness. It's based on the life of an Australian guy called John Hull, who after losing his sight at the age of 48, decided to document his new experience as a blind man by recording his thoughts each day on cassette tape, a kind of audio diary. In this clip, we hear John recounting his day, a day when he made his way out of his front door, but began to take in his surroundings in a new way. A note on the experience of hearing rain falling. This evening I came out the front door of the house and it was raining. I stood for a few minutes lost in the beauty of it. Rain brings out the contours of what's around you in that it introduces a blanket of differentiated and specialised sound which fills the whole of the audible environment. If only there could be something equivalent to rain falling inside, then the whole of a room would take on shape and dimension. Instead of being isolated, cut off, preoccupied internally, you are presented with a world. You are related to a world. You are addressed by a world. Why should this experience strike one as being beautiful? Cognition is beautiful. It's beautiful to know.
You see, for John, the noise made by the rain suddenly gave shape to his surroundings as it bounced off different surfaces in different ways. Even though he'd lost his sight, he'd gained a new appreciation of the sonic landscape that existed around him, a new way of knowing the world. And as he said at the end of the clip, it's beautiful to know. After his death in 2015, his wife, Marilyn, was interviewed about her late husband. And she had this to say about the impact his blindness had had on his approach to life. She said, people say to me, wouldn't you have loved him to have got his sight back? Of course, of course I would. But the gift is living with what is, rather than dwelling with some other imagined existence. John felt the miracle was renewed consciousness. The idea that you can live with integrity and clarity in what has become, in many ways, a very different world. And so with this in mind, if we turn to the Bible and look at the life of Jesus. I think we see in Jesus someone who was in the business of helping people to have a renewed consciousness, to see life in new ways, to see life ultimately through God's eyes. So for example, there are various occasions when Jesus healed blind people and restored their sight. Now, whilst these miracles were a good thing in and of themselves, they're also perhaps a picture or a metaphor for the way in which Jesus can open our eyes to see the world around us in new, deeper ways. One such miracle is recorded in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, in which we're told this story. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Now, it's an interesting story because we're told the man is healed by Jesus in not one, but two phases. After healing part one, if you like, the man can sort of see, but things are blurred. You know, he sees people, but it's as if they're trees walking around. And so Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes again. And bingo, healing part two. The man can now see fully. Or as Mark says, his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Seems to me that this is a story of healing which has something to say to us today in our current circumstances. You know, in some ways, we could say that the lockdown we've been experiencing has taken away our ability to see the world as we once did. For the time being, we've lost the ability to see our friends in the flesh to visit our extended family. We're unable to discover new places and see their sights. We're unable to watch sport, to go to the cinema or window shop as we may once have done. And yet because 
When something is lost, something new is gained. And because Jesus is in the business of opening our eyes to his truth, in the midst of the loss of lockdown, we are gaining the ability to see life in a new and different way. And so I would say the question Jesus asks to the blind man after his eyes have been partially opened is the same question Jesus is asking of us at this time. Do you see anything? Do you see anything? If so, what are you seeing? Maybe you're seeing the importance of friends and family, of community with new eyes. Maybe you're recognising afresh how much joy and pleasure there is to be found in the world around us. Maybe you're realising the sense of fulfilment that comes from helping those in need. Maybe in its absence, you're seeing the importance of being able to meet and worship alongside other people of faith each week. Whatever it is that our eyes are slowly being opened to, I would suggest Jesus asks us what we're seeing because he wants us to share our answer with him. You see, in vocalising our thoughts to Jesus, a process we might call prayer, well, it's in that response that Jesus is able to build on whatever progress he's enabled us to make. And so I would encourage you to tell Jesus today those things which your eyes have been opened to of late. Those things which you're realising you value and care for. Those things which you're determined not to take for granted when all this is over. You see, I don't think Jesus wants us to leave this season of lockdown, whenever that time comes, with only a partial ability to see the world clearly. Indeed, the danger is that when lockdown ends and things begin to open up again, we might soon forget the lessons soon forget the new way of seeing that this season has given us and things will simply go back to the way they were. But that would be a shame because as we said, despite the sense of loss with lockdown, despite the difficulties we're facing at this current time, what we're gaining is that our eyes are being opened to what really matters in life community, friendship, fellowship, generosity, faith, love. And so by sharing with Jesus what our eyes are beginning to see, even if only in a blurry, partial way, we give him permission to lay his hands on our eyes again in order to give us a vision for what is possible in the world through him going forward from here. The good news is Jesus knows what he wants our world to look like. He knows that the values, the, the principles, the practices by which this world will work best. Values and principles and practices in which the last and the lost and the least are loved and cared for, in which the needs of others are put before our own, in which kindness, not consumption, is the mark of what it means to be fully alive. Now that to me sounds like a world I want to live in. That to me Sounds like a world I want to do my part in helping to build. That to me sounds like a vision for what's possible under God's guidance and through his gifting. 
Maybe, maybe it sounds like a world you would want to live in too. And if that's the case, my encouragement today for each of us is to ask Jesus to open our eyes fully so that we can see him, so that we can see each other, and so that we can see his world ever more clearly. we pray. Dear God, thank you for this story today of the way in which Jesus healed this blind man in stages, opening his eyes gradually to the fullness, to the beauty of the world around him. Lord, thank you that despite what we've lost in this season of lockdown, we are gaining a new sense, new perspectives on what really matters in life. Thank you for opening our eyes, even if only in part for now, to your priorities, your principles. Help us, please, to be open with you in sharing what we've seen of late, the things we would want you to help us to remember from this time, to build on going forward, to value more than perhaps we have before. Help us too to know how to support and be alongside those for whom this time has been particularly difficult, for those struggling with mental or physical health issues, for those living with bereavement, for those looking after or caring for others, for those facing financial difficulties and pressures. Give us the eyes to see where the needs are and the resources and ability to either meet those needs ourselves or refer those needs on to those who may be better placed to help. Above all, God, we ask that you would open our eyes ever more fully to the potential and the possibilities for this, your world. That we would be willing to partner with you in putting your ways into practice. We might say, so that your kingdom comes and your will is done. And Lord, thank you that you know what you're doing, that you are an eye-opening healer, that you are the one who was and is and is to come, that you are the one who goes behind and beside and before us in all we're about. May that truth instill trust and faith in you. And may that faith shape our lives in seeking what's possible through your love. Amen. Now, although we've been spending most of our time on these Sundays using passages from the gospel stories of Jesus, the final book of the Bible, the one we call Revelation, is just that. It's a revelation, a revealing of what the future with God looks like. It's a vision, which although it has some pretty wacky imagery in places, essentially speaks of a time when heaven and earth become one, joined together as Jesus comes again to live with us, lovingly ruling this new combined heaven and earth. It's in the book of Revelation that we get this language of God being the one who was and is and is to come. The one who knows our past, identifies with our present and assures us of our future. And so in light of all that we've been looking at today and by way of offering ourselves to God, We're going to listen to a track called Revelation Song, 
which the band at St John's have kindly recorded this week. As it plays, you might want to use this as a soundtrack to your own prayers, asking God to reveal to you just who he is, how good his plans are for the world, and how you might be used by him in helping to put those plans into practice.
Thanks very much to Millie and Ellen and Mark for that. And thank you for your time today in sharing this session together. Let's keep asking Jesus to open our eyes to the reality of his love this week. Let's go by asking for his blessing, that we might be a blessing to others. May the Lord Jesus bless us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and our lives echo his love.